Hello students, today I'll be explaining this line graph to you. It has been seen in the past in the academic IELTS writing test. The graphs below show the average daily hours of sunshine and the average daily temperature in Darwin and Melbourne. Uh, average monthly temperature in Darwin and Melbourne. Uh, summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So you can see that uh, the, there are two line graphs which have been given and you have to condense the information given in both the graphs uh, in about, you know, they say not less than 150 words. And I uh, say that even if you have to go lengthy, should never ever exceed 200 words because that will be too lengthy and uh, it'll even take more time and uh, you'll have to borrow time that you have to give to your essay. So that would be a blunder. So the, the a good length for the graph is about 180 words, 170, 180, 190. Uh, never be beyond 200 because it will be too lengthy and uh, I'll admit it here that when I wrote this graph for the first time it went very lengthy. So in this graph you'll also learn techniques how to condense your graph, how to condense what you have to write because otherwise it will be very very lengthy and uh, the introduction now I make from the question. So you see the question the graphs below show. Below there will be no graph in your answer sheet. So you will say the given, the given line graphs. You know what graphs they are. So you can use the word line here. The given line graphs compare. So you can say they are comparing the hours of sunshine and the monthly temperature. So you can use the word compare. Another word you can use here is illustrate. But here the word compare is going pretty fine. So I will use compare. The given line graphs compare the daily hours of sunshine and the monthly temperature in two Australian cities, Darwin and Melbourne. Now we come to the overview. The overview starts with the word overall. Overall, comma, Melbourne is sunnier than Darwin for most part of the year, whereas Darwin is hotter than Melbourne throughout the year. So you can see this is Melbourne. This dashed line is for Melbourne and this is sunnier than Darwin. You can see more hours of sunshine than Darwin for most part of the year. Only this one month here and two months here, it is sunnier than Darwin for most part of the year. And whereas Darwin is hotter than Melbourne. This uh, solid line is for Darwin and it is hotter than Melbourne throughout the year. So this uh, one sentence is giving the gist of both the line graphs. So this is a very good sentence of the overview. And I'll not write a lengthy overview here because I have to, in this graph, I have to learn how to condense all the information. And as this overview is giving the over, actual overview of both the graphs, so I think this is enough. Now we'll go to the writing the graphs. In Darwin, the sun shines for 10 hours per day in January. So you can see this is Darwin. The sun shines for 10 hours a day in January. But by March, this number decreases to 6. But by March, this number decreases to 6. Then there is a stability till June. But after that, these hours increase sharply to 12, 12 by November with a sharp dip off, with a slight dip of 2 hours in September. So I have, you know, from this to this, I have made one sentence and I have mentioned about this dip here. So actually these hours of sunshine are going up. So I have said that after June, these uh, hours, uh, you know, they increase sharply to 12 by November uh, with a slight dip of two hours in September. November and December are the sunniest months. These two months are the sunniest months. Uh, with 12 hours of sunshine every day. With 12 hours. You can see this is 12. So these two months are the sunniest. With 12 hours of sunshine every day. On the other hand, Melbourne follows an opposing trend. So what is an opposing trend? 
when this line is going down this is going up and when this is going up this is going down so this is an opposing trend so you can write that melbourne and darwin follow an opposing trend so on the other hand melbourne follows an opposing trend and has only 6 hours of sunshine in january it has only 6 hours of sunshine in january but by may by may there is a sharp escalation there is a sharp escalation to 12 hours so by may ye i have just ignored this in in between because it it will be too lengthy otherwise so by may there is a sharp escalation to 12 hours may to october months see may to october months have 12 hours of sunshine per day after which the number falls to 8 in november and december so uh, they have these these months have 12 hours of sunshine and after which the number falls to uh, 8 in November and December. So this is all about this graph. Then we go to the other graph. The temperature in Darwin fluctuates between, uh, this is for Darwin. So the temperature fluctuates between, this is approximately 25 and this is approximately 35. So the temperature in Darwin fluctuates between 25 and 35 degrees C with January and June being the coolest months. This is January and this is June. These two are the coolest months. Coolest in the sense that their temperature is 25. And uh, this is all about Darwin I have written. So the temperature fluctuates between these 10 degrees 25 and 35. And January and June are the coolest months. In Melbourne, in Melbourne, the temperature ranges between 10 and 30. So the lowest is 10 and highest is 30. So we'll say it ranges between 10 and 30 with May, June and July being the coolest months. So May, June and July, these are the coolest months. Um, and August to November, the hottest. So this is August to November. These are the hottest months. August to November are the hottest. So this is the graph. You can see a few things in this. First thing is that when the no time is given, you have to write the whole graph in the present tense. Secondly, you have to write the overview after the introduction. And here the introduction has to be just one sentence. If you are writing the overview, just uh, beneath it. So just after the intro, you, uh, after the intro sentence, you write the overview. Then the overview, uh, overview can go a bit lengthy, but in this graph, it was not needed. So present tense used, overview after the introduction, it, you know, you give the general trends and then you give the data in the two uh, paragraphs. One thing which I would like to point out is many students write that the first graph tells us you can write like that. But in this graph, I was already, you know, struggling to condense it. It was going too lengthy. So in such graphs, you can omit those when you write the sun shines for 10 hours. Which graph is telling about the sunshine? The first one. Automatically it is understood that it is we are talking about the first line graph. And uh, if both the line graphs are showing the same thing, then of course you, you will have to write it for sure that the, from the first graph, we first line graph we come to know. And then many students uh, yesterday wrote in the first graph, the sun shines for these many hours. So in the first graph, the sun shines. This is wrong. From the first graph, we come to know that. So these, this will be, that is correct, but this will be adding too many words. So I've just omitted that altogether. I've straight away started writing uh, about the hours of sunshine in Darwin and Melbourne. And I have straight away started writing in the second para about the temperature. This is because the first line graph is about sunshine and the second is about temperature. So you do not have to, you know, write that. It will save words. In such graphs, you have you have to learn how to condense all the data and put the maximum in the minimum words. So this is uh, uh, this graph is in the present tense. No time is given. Then, but you know you can see the months are given on the x-axis. So there will be the vocabulary of line graphs which we use. Uh, we'll say increase sharply. Increase sharply means this is the verb and this is the adverb. So this is a verb adverb. Uh, combination 
uh, here I've used the word stability which is a noun stability is a noun so there is stability till June then you can say there is a sharp escalation here sharp escalation is the adjective noun combination sharp is the adjective escalation is the noun so uh, this is either you use the verb adverb combination in the line graph or you use the adjective noun combination so both these combinations have been used you can use uh, you don't have to show your range of grammar you can use both these types of combinations then uh, you have to see uh, the I've used the word fluctuates you can use the word fluctuations are seen or you can see temperature fluctuates and then uh, you, I've used the word temperature ranges between. See here also I have condensed the words degree C. You can say degrees Celsius. There will be two words. But here I've omitted. I've saved two words by using the symbols here. So you can use symbols and uh, to save the word count. And after having written uh, this, I just wanted to see what is the word count here. So this comes out to be around 195 words. This is uh, uh, quite lengthy, but then it is the best I could do. And uh, to, uh, I have omitted most of the words like uh, the first graph tells us, the second graph tells us. And I've omitted, you know, I've tried to condense. I've used uh, symbols instead of words for degrees Celsius. And uh, so I hope you've understood how to write this graph. Uh, in your book, a slightly lengthier version is given. So I would suggest that you uh, write this one now and this is a bit uh, uh, smaller. I've condensed it to 195 words. Thank you very much for watching patiently.